Custom items! This is different from what we currently use. Currently, we grab a weapon we like and then put some VFX over it and check in first if you're holding that item. Then we give it the abilities you want, like these brain rot weapons. Custom items allow you to just create a whole item the way it's intended and even put it in the inventory slot you want. This access to inventories also gives us cool possibilities like the one on screen. And if you want to learn how to do this, leave a like and I'll ask Chris how he made this so I can teach you guys. This update also allows us to put items directly into players' inventories, making it finally possible for us to not need item granters and saving on memory in the future. But with all fun updates, it is an experimental and you will not be able to publish until who knows when. Since it is an experimental, there are some issues including, but not limited to, all your binds getting reset and your interact bind not working well. I'm spamming scroll wheel in this clip and my scroll wheel is my interact bind. Items do not place directly in your specified inventory slot. If you decide to go to a specific slot, it only goes to your weapon hotbar. If you add a details component on simulate instead of in the prefab, you will not see the item's name. Sometimes dropping the item will make the item disappear. If you keep pressing drop item, it'll just keep bouncing the item around even when it's out of your inventory. The doc's code is wrong. Get agent inventory is said to not release until version 38.0, so you have to use a different function. This makes their example code wrong. You will get an error, but once version 38.0 comes out, you most likely won't receive an error. On the bright side, a lot of resources have already come out on this. ZMac made a jetpack, and with it, he released a template for you to make custom items. So make sure you go follow him, link in the description. The template may be confusing for some people, so I'm gonna teach you a more beginner-friendly way. And then I'm gonna show you ZMAX way, which you should invest in learning or at least creating your own off of because it's definitely gonna be the most expandable for future use. If you remember in the last video, we talked about entities and components. Your entity is your thing and your components tell that thing how to behave. If you want more details on that, check out my last video. To make a custom item, we need to tell our entity that it is a custom item with the correct components. We're gonna need a mesh with collision to interact with. I'm making a cube with the modeling tool double clicking on the mesh, changing the material that I already made, and making sure it has collision. Then create an entity prefab definition by right clicking your content drawer, add a mesh component by clicking add component and selecting our mesh. If your mesh isn't there, build verse code and check again. Next, we give it the four item pickup component to be able to pick up our entity. Then we add the item details component. This is the name you see when you pick up the item and the description when you click the item in an inventory. Now we need to give it an icon with the item icon component. Next, specify which inventory slot we want to put this item in. As of recording, this component is broken and items only go in the four inventory weapon hotbar. Finally, we need to tell the entity it is an item with the item component, add an element to the array, and you're done with the setup. Next, we wanna actually do things when we equip or are holding our item, and we do that with verse. Go ahead and create a new verse component. I'm gonna call mine item buff component. Last video, I told you I like to just use on simulate, but for custom items, I actually found on begin simulation and on end simulation to be quite useful because for some reason, custom items start and end simulating when you pick up or when you drop items. Before we start writing our code, you should paste in this code from ZMAX script. It will allow us to return what agent has the item in their inventory. Now we're gonna start creating our script. We're gonna create a simulation ended event to clean up any loops that will be running in our script. Then we're gonna create an optional agent. That's what the question mark agent means. This way we can set the item owner and we can apply any future effects to the player when they hold the item or when they pick up the item. Now we're gonna set the owner. We do this by running an item picked up function and passing in an item component. Item component allows us to get the parent inventory, which returns an inventory component, which we need to run our get owning agent function. This will tell us who has the item, and now we could set item owner to the agent by setting the optional, and we could create a new function for picked up item and pass in an agent. Now, if you also want to do something when a player picks up an item, this is where you would do that. Since the item only begins simulating when you pick up the item, we only need to run the function once in on begin simulation. And since we need an item component, just like I taught you guys last video, we just do entity.getComponent and we pass in our item component. Next, we wanna check if you're actually holding the item. So we make a check item equip function that is a suspense function because we're gonna make this a race. We race against our simulation ended event and loop item comp.equipChangeEvent.await 
and we want the result it returns because if you control click it, you will see that the logic returns if it is currently equipped and then we can get our equipped agent by getting our item owner. And now we can make an equip function as well and we can set an else statement here for unequipped. But if you want something to happen to the agent when they unequip it, you need to make it an else if to get the item owner and then pass in the agent that way. Now we just need cleanup. In the on end simulation function, let's signal our simulation ended event. We get our owning agent and this is where you would run an item drop function. Before I forget, let's spawn our check item equipped into our on begin simulation as well. Now we just add our item buff component to our custom item. And as you can see, when we pick it up, it says picked up. When we drop it, it says drop. When we equip it, it says equip. When we unequip it, it says unequip. Everything's working. So what does this look like in practice? For my example, I made this medallion that when you pick it up, the player gets double their HP, so they get 200 HP. And when they drop the medallion, we remove their bonus HP. Now a medallion spawns in the world after you kill an NPC. It has a sound effects and a VFX. So I added an editable sound effects and VFX to my component, created a separate verse device to spawn in the entity after the NPC gets eliminated, teleport it to them, assign the editables in code, link up all my devices. And as you can see, when I eliminate the NPC, we get our medallion, we get our double HP, we get the sound effects, we get the VFX, and we have our own custom medallion. This is basically under the hood of how ZMAX template works. Let's copy and paste his item child in item parent class into an empty verse script. As you can see, the child just inherits from the parent and he actually went over a function that I didn't, stack size. If you control click, you can see there's a lot we can do with it. I actually didn't do much research for stack size. I believe it works like how ammo does where you could set the stack size to 50 or 60 or whatever. If you know how stack size works, leave a comment because I'm not gonna be covering it today. To set his up, you won't need an item component, details component, icon component, or pickup component because they get instantiated on begin simulation within his class. All you have to do is write your code in the child class, my item, and build your prefab. And if you wanted something for a new item, you just copy over this template, rename your class, and get started. So let's build the prefab. I'm calling mine ZMAC prefab. Then I put in the agent item base component, fill in the icon, details, and an array element to the item category. Then add your mesh component and your fort inventory component. As of right now, the details component will not instantiate on begin simulation, so you would need a separate item details component. But with that, ZMAX is all set up and you can begin making custom items. He told me that he wants to see what you guys make with his template, so make sure to add him on Twitter if you make something using his template. When we have access to Fortnite characters holding weapons, this is most likely how we're going to be able to control custom weapons. We have the ability to raycast with scene graph already, and with raycasting we can see if objects are in the direction you casted the ray towards. And I'll be going over how to get an overlapping fort character using scene graph, and how to use raycasting and scene graph in the future, so make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out.